Welcome back. In today's video we have a submission from Olteanu and it's about this character and we also have the idle animation. So before I even start I just like to say that the character looks very interesting. It's like a two-legged walking tadpole with scary looking teeth. So let's jump into it. So the first thing I did is I created a new file and since this is an upscaled image I downscaled it by three times so it, it may not be perfect but nonetheless we have the character i also isolated just one frame of the animation i reworked the color palette basically i just rearranged it so it looks a bit neater when compared to the last one and also i have created two frames so we have the before and after to compare the results as usual first i'll start with the color palette and see what we can do to optimize it so what i'll do is just take each and every single color i'll have a background I will draw it on the canvas and use magic wand tool to select where exactly it is on the character to see what it's its usage and in case I find any color that can be replaced or combined I will let you know so I'll just time skip so we can save a little bit on the time. Alright so I did find few colors that could be combined so first of all we have this color as a shadow tone so if I draw it you can see that it's only being used on few places and I think we can just simply combine it with the shadow tone to basically just save up some space on the color palette since we have eight different colors for the green tone I think we can reduce it to six maybe and the second color is this one it's this shadow tone right here do you see uh, right next to the shadow tone we have this bluish hue bluish tone bluish color and I think we can combine it right to the color next to it because if you look at these two colors and if I just zoom out, do you see how they blend in together? This blue color adds like a strange shine to the overall image. At first I thought this was a rim light of some sorts, but if I emphasize this color, you can see that the shading position on some places it does fit the rim light to some extent, but on others it really doesn't. So I think that this is just a shadow tone and I like to combine it with this specific color especially because if I just watch at the value of the tone so if I create a new layer place the black color all over the canvas and change that layers mode to color it could be hue or whichever it is do you see how these two are very similar so this is the reason why I just want to combine these two colors and there we go now I can also erase this color as well. Now we have only six green colors on this overall image and it's going to be a bit easier to work with. Also, I did find some red tones that overlap to some extent. Do you see how the red tones for the eye, for these fins and for this mouth is on a smaller surface than the green tone, yet they had the same amount of colors. I don't think we need so many colors for the red tone. We can combine those and reuse them. I did notice that some of these are reused, for example, this tone. However, the highlight here on the mouth isn't being reused anywhere else. So it's very specific to the mouth. What I did find was a couple of colors that we can combine. So first of all, these two. Do you see how similar they are? There's barely any difference. And yet one of those is used only on the mouth and the other is being used here as the shadow tone on the eye and the fins. So I'll just take this specific tone and also apply it to the mouth. It's just a tad darker. And there we go. We also created a smaller color palette. So we can erase this one as well. And the last thing we could do is about the mouth, we could perhaps change the highlight on the mouth for this one on the eyes, though it's not necessary. Perhaps you really wanted that darker, redder look, perhaps to indicate some kind of... Uh, a liquid like wet mouth or perhaps uh, even blood who knows so i'll just keep it as is but hopefully we've removed just two green tones and just one this purplish reddish tone but i hope you get the idea so try to reduce your color palette as much as possible because i really think that you can use just maybe three or four different colors that will include the mouth the eyes and the fins all in the same colors so i'll leave that challenge up to you so you can work a little bit on your skills on combining the color palette and optimizing it the next thing i want to talk about are the legs so do you see these legs how they are placed first of all i think that the shading really doesn't work all that well now imagine if you have uh in this case the leg 
and the sunlight or the light source is right here on the top left side and if it's directly hitting this portion of the leg this portion of the leg should be brighter than this portion of the leg down here which is looking down does that make sense because any surface area that is looking away from the light source should get less light so keeping that in mind we can keep these two in the light since they are looking towards the light source but at this portion since it's looking away we have to make it darker so what i'll do i'll just take one tone from here and there we go so we have the before and after so far the second thing i want to talk about is the perspective and how it influences the the leg itself i think that this leg behind is of a different let's say anatomy than the one in the front why do i say this well because if i take a color do you see how this leg starts to go bent to the left where it's the next joint well this leg as far as we can see it's already here and it's not bending and if the perspective is of such a way this leg should also start bending this way around this point so the easy way you can do that is first erase the leg behind then we can make sure the outlines also fit on this front leg there we go and now i'm going to select this entire leg with lasso tool do you can use it with other things as well i'll copy paste this leg i'm going to clean it up a little bit then i will take this same leg create a new layer below our current layer so it's hidden behind and then we can simply place it behind and then move it to the left where we think it's going to fit the most now in this case i think i've pretty much nailed the position almost so maybe we'll just one pixel to the left side there we go and now you can see that the difference in anatomy how these two legs so this is the before and this is after you can see that the anatomy is more consistent now simply because we just took one leg copy paste it and place it behind the character and now we can combine these two layers it's a pretty nifty trick and right now if you really want to keep these legs like so you can just do, do exactly like that and i'm just going to show you an alternative style on how you can shade the leg behind in case you want to push the leg further and this is also one of the stylistic choices so this is just as an option so to speak you can take these colors in the back and make them darker so you are essentially making this entire leg in the background for let's say a couple of tones darker than the one in the front so i'm going to redo this but just to show you an example so this is roughly the idea you can push this leg further in the background if you just darken everything up this is really commonly used in pixel art but it's not in all styles so in case of your style if you really want to keep it uh, bright and in the light you can certainly do that as well in which case again since this is looking downwards we have to make sure that it doesn't have as much light as this portion right here so we can reuse this tone right here and this one can be used just like so and perhaps add a little bit of cast shadow just behind it to separate it okay there we go then moving on applying that same principle we can rework the teeth as well because the legs right now are flat and you can see that the leg behind is just x amount of pixels to the left side however the teeth also go to the left and up and since this is a platformer view we want to keep everything as flat as possible we want to move teeth down by these few pixels at least those teeth in the back so to speak otherwise if you don't want to do this you could also alternatively push these legs or rather the leg behind up a little bit so up by a few pixels but since this is again platform view we want to keep everything flat i would suggest doing the same thing that we did for the legs to the teeth so what i'll do is just speed up the process i'll just isolate each tooth and replicate it on the other side Okay, now that I have recreated this specific tooth, there are a couple of things that you can do. You can either count pixels like we did for the legs. So we have this pixel right here. And then we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we can apply this same distance 
on the legs here on the tooth as well it's not necessary it's not a must but it's something that you can do if you want so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and this is roughly where the position of these teeth or tusks i'm not sure which one there there are can be now we can also combine this here as well you may notice that this is quite a bit further away from the character's position than before so if you want to push it a bit to the right you can certainly do so so this is our, this is just going to be uh, your option then i'm going to rework the top tooth as well and in this specific case i will not place the distance between the upper teeth so far apart because i think it might look a bit too unnatural if i place it nine pixels apart so i'll just roughly eyeball it where i think it would fit so i think this should be fine again for consistency if you want you can do so but i would have to rework this upper portion of the character and it would take quite a bit of time so this is the before and this is the after so it's not a big difference but i do think that consistency in anatomy at least wherever you can apply it uh, certainly is quite useful okay so this is just like a perspective and anatomy a uh, little tip so let's move on since we are already around this area of the mouth i think that there's a nifty trick how you can emphasize the mouth and that's simply just take this shadow tone and go over the mouth area to create this shadow tone around it now you can see the before and after this just one line creates an extra depth to the mouth itself next i think that the mouth or rather the inside of the mouth is just a bit too bright so i'd like to remove this specific tone actually two of these and then if i want to add a little bit of that texture we can certainly do so like that so this is the before and after i just made the inside of the mouth a bit darker so i push it further inside and further in the background so it has a nicer volume again the before and after and i think we can also clean this one up since this is part of the tooth behind there we go next i think that we can since we've talked about legs i think that we can connect the tail to the body a bit more nicely since right now it looks like it's a bit disconnected thanks to this this line over here personally i'd like to combine this with the main body a bit more so i'll just erase a few pixels like so and now it's a bit more connected to the body just like that it doesn't take all that much but it's really nice next if you want to add a bit more interesting texture to the tail you can disconnect the highlights into these little chunks so to speak so it replicates some kind of a scale effect it's not necessary again i'm not sure which texture you are trying to achieve on the fins you can add this highlight to make them a bit look a bit more pointier so you can see the before and after it adds like a sharp edge to the fins and i think these upper ones can be all the way on the back i think that we can talk about texture itself on the character right now i can see it's a bit strange looking but it doesn't have a defined texture i'm not sure if the surface of the skin is smooth is it a bit rough or does this character have scales so i'll just show you a nifty trick how you can add a little bit of scale so we have at least a little bit of a defined texture in the character and the best place i think we can place it is right here so i'll just clean this entire area up okay there we go and now how we can make a scale effect is quite simple so make one specific scale yeah, i think this shape should work well on this type of character then you can select this shape press ctrl b so we have it as a paintbrush and then connect the middle of the scale to the end of the previous scale like so and these will connect like that and then we'll just repeat the process until we get to the end and there we go so now we have an easy scale effect if you want to emphasize the scales you can just place this highlight tone on one of these pixels you can see this tetris uh, object so to speak <laughs> and just like that and towards the end we can even inverse the colors if you want to shade them in a different way so we can essentially take this 
shadow tone, make it one tone darker, and do the same thing to the highlights, make them one tone darker, just like that. And again, you can place the highlights on these portions. And there we go. So you have the poor and after. Now we have at least some kind of a defined scale look to our character. And I'll try to rework this scale effect here on the upper portion as well. And on this upper portion, I want to use different types of scales than the ones right here. Do you can certainly use the same if you if you really want. And there we go. So this is roughly it. There's certainly a lot of more things that uh, can be done for the scales. But do you see how I'm trying to find a pattern that's going to work for this type of fish? But hopefully that gets the message across. And the last tip for today is the background itself. The checkerboard pattern doesn't look the best in this specific color, so I would rather if we have, if we darken it a bit more. So if I compare the value right now, if I create a new layer again, black color, mode, color, you can see that the color of the character and the value of the character is quite close to the background itself. So what we can do is we can make the character brighter by making the background darker there we go so you have a nice background your character pops out quite a bit more than before and finally here's the before and after those are not big differences just few small fixes and all i did was try to emphasize the scales as a texture try to shade everything just a bit more consistently and especially when it comes to perspective and the anatomy just try to make it a bit more consistent now, I don't think players would notice inconsistencies in anatomies unless they are artists themselves, to be honest. So this isn't something that you should be too worried about. However, when you try to animate the walk cycle, if the anatomy is off, you won't be exactly sure how to animate the leg behind. So I hope these few things help you out. I do think that the teeth look a bit strange when adjusted for this perspective. So perhaps you want to bring them even a bit closer, but I think we've spent enough time on the character already. And by default, it looks pretty nice as well. I don't think it needs that much changing at all, but hopefully these few tips helped you out. So that's all for today. And as always, relax, enjoy, and have fun.